With the launch of the Pico 2 and RP2350 comes a new version of the SDK 200. This release of the SDK is of course targeted for the RP2350. It isn't all about that though, as there are some bug fixes and even a new feature for the Pico W. There's also a change to the build process and more direct support for the FreeRTOS kernel. Let me tell you all about it. Hi, I'm John, your concierge to the world of the Raspberry Pi Pico, Pico 2, robotics, IoT, and other fun tech. Remember to subscribe and join the community. We are privileged on the Pico to have an SDK that is 100% open source. We can see every bit of code the Pico runs. We can also choose to run the tool chain in different models. Though the Raspberry Pi is moving to a strategy where the hobbyist might run the tool chain in VS Code and it's an extension. I'm sticking with the command line though in a more industrial model for now. In this video, I'm going to look at some of the new features of the SDK 200. I'll mention some of the Pico 2 features, but not demonstrate them in this video. I want to instead clarify the changes to the toolchain build process for SDK 200 and how you can use this. This is a change to how the UF2 file that we use for boot cell flashing is generating. If you like this video and it helps your learning or all projects, why not drop me a cash tip using the super thanks button below the video. I'm saving these up to get myself to open source in San Francisco next year and I'd appreciate your help in getting me there. And I hope to see you there too. Please hit the like button on the video and subscribe for more. So what's really new with SDK 200? Well, largely this is about the RP2350 and the Pico 2. But there are some other things in here that we really should be aware of. Um, the ELF to UF2 utility that we've all been using for since day one of the Pico um, is actually being replaced and retired. So I'll talk about that in a bit. Then of course the RP2350 support, which includes quite a bit of security work and some additional new libraries uh, for the additional capabilities and peripherals on, on the chip. Um, WA3 support, which comes for our um, Pico W, so we can actually now use WA3 for Wi-Fi connectivity. And there's actually a FreeRTOS kernel library in connecting that. So um, I'll talk about that in a bit because that's quite important as well. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. On their journey to be the most professional PCB manufacturer for prototyping and low volume production work in the world. Have you checked out PCBWay's YouTube channel? They have some great tutorials on PCB design and soldering techniques. PCBWay do much more than just PCBs like 3D printing with options of FDM like my home printer, SLS, and SLA, with some really great results. And don't forget their community projects pages and module shop. Why would you go anywhere else but PCB way? So we all know that there are two binaries that we use with the Pico, the ELF that we use to load via SWD and generally open OCD in order to flash onto the Pico, or the UF2 binary, which we use when we're doing the boot cell approach to loading and flashing binaries onto a Pico. What you might not know, and you probably should have known, was that the ELF binary is the one that's actually being constructed by GCC and the compiler, whereas the UF2 is actually a manipulation of that binary uh, done by a utility called ELF2UF2 that gets built as part of the make process when we're building any of our projects. And it's that ELF to UF2 um, utility that is being um, removed and, uh, and moved away from within the Pico SDK 2.0.0. Instead of using that utility, they're going to use the Pico tool utility, which sort of makes sense because it's got a lot of other utilities that I must admit I don't use very often either. Um, but there are a lot of other capabilities in there as well. So why wouldn't it do the ELF to UF2? In our project structure, um, nothing really changes with the Pico SDK 200. Um, 
the it's of course we're going to use an environmental variable to know where the actual Pico SDK is um, and then Pico tools if you're just using this out of the box will actually get built as part of your project much like elf to uf2 used to get built and uh, well now it will download the pico tools project and actually build that as part of the uh, project now you can choose not to do that and to be honest it sort of makes sense to do so because you're going to have a consistent version of pico tool that you're going to run for every one of your pico sdk 200 projects and so what we can do is set up the Pico tools fetch from git paths uh, environmental variable to point to a previously downloaded version of uh, Pico tools. We just clone it out um, uh, from uh, uh, GitHub and then we can actually uh, point to it and use that instead. And that's one way of uh, setting up this and actually avoiding needing to rebuild Pico tools every time we actually compile our project. And I've, I've done that. It seems to work quite well. The other thing I've done, which finally, um, which has taken me a while, I must admit, is to actually not copy in the Pico SDK import .cmake file, but actually use the copy that's actually inside the Pico SDK in the externals folder. So that's probably a better way of doing it. I don't really need to copy of it in every one of my projects. Um, I can just use it remotely. If you want to see the copy of uh, my experiments with the SDK 200 and how I've set things up, then uh, they're over on GitHub and you're welcome to go and have a look. The SDK really um, 200 is focused around the RP2350 launch. And so we've got all of the new capability to support that. And quite a lot of that is in the area of security. The fact that we can now sign a um, binary and firmware that we're going to load onto the Pico2 and on, or an RP2350 uh, board. Um, that of course only takes any effect if we've actually locked down the uh, board itself by uh, using the fuses on board and indeed loading on a key, uh, the public key that actually the um, firmware has been signed with the private key from. The other um, security feature there that I guess is really important is the acceleration for SHA-256. The SDK also includes all of the libraries to get us access to the peripherals. Um, so starting from the floating point unit that we now have access to, which should greatly increase the uh, floating point capability of our PICOs. The power management, there's, and there's a much wider set of power management capabilities on the RP2350 than we had on the um, RP2040. The always on timer. So one of the things on, that's actually interesting about the RP2350 is we've lost the um, real time clock that we used to have on uh, an RP2040. Though, to be honest, it never was quite a real time clock. So it was a little bit of an odd beast. But uh, that's been replaced by this long running or, or um, always on timer. And there is a new consistent library um, available to work with that on both the RP2040's version of it and the 2350. So that's quite useful. And finally, direct memory access. And the library for this is going to give us access to the HSTX so that we can actually send out uh, data at 300 uh, megahertz, I think, which is quite interesting and useful, probably going to be largely around video. The other thing for the RP2350 in the SDK is the ability to build for the RISC-V architecture and provide an, an RP2350 RISC-V uh, board. So that, that's there as well. Um, I'll talk about that perhaps uh, if I experiment with it in a later date. So with the RP2350, there's going to be support for free RTOS straight out of the gates, which is great. And this is consistent support across how RP2040 and the 2350 will use free RTOS. And the way that they've done that is not to um, add this in to the free RTOS's, um, repo 
but actually to uh, fork it and create a new copy over on the Raspberry Pi space. And so that is the uh, area and the repo that is recommended to be used for anyone wanting to run free RTOS kernel on the Pico or Pico 2. Now we can of course load that under a library and just use that as we've done previously. There are a few little changes, but also you know we might as well actually use a consistent free Artos kernel library, I guess, as part of our whole Pico stack and just uh, say it's an additional set that we're actually remotely accessing. And that's what I've done. It does require us to use a new version of the FreeRTOS kernel import.cmake, which now handles uh, the RP2040 and RP2350 platform definitions so that we actually get the right builds and the right memory models, etc., all in place to be able to use this. But um, yeah, no, it, 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 it runs and I, I've set up a, a an example project um, on the uh, Git repo I shared earlier, which actually demonstrates that uh, we can quickly get a project off the ground using the uh, FreeRTOS version for the SDK 2.0.0. I've not fully migrated to the SDK 2.0.0 yet. I'm just testing in my environment. In fact, I have SDK 1.5.0 and 151 still lying around as well. I also have the development release of the SDK available to me. Um, I started playing around with that after finding some bugs in the Pico Hibernate process. I'll be doing some videos showing the SDK 200 features for the Pico 2 real soon. What are the most look forward features you, you're looking forward to seeing? Let me know in the comments and perhaps I can prioritize them in the production schedule. If you like this video and it helps your learning or projects, why not drop me a cash tip using the super thanks button below the video? Remember, I'm saving these up to get myself to open source in San Francisco next year, and I'd appreciate your help in getting me there, and of course I want to see you there too. Thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And if you enjoy the video, please hit that like button, and please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next video. Bye bye for now.